Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the top 10 affordable neighbor suburban neighborhoods in Philadelphia. Stay tuned. So I figured that I'll come out with this top 10 with this list because we let, let's be honest with COVID, a lot of people are reevaluating where they want to live at. So if you're living in a dense area and you find yourself to be working from home remotely, your job may have switched to you being working from home as opposed to traveling into, into work, or may, as may, many parents, as such as myself, uh, we had started virtual schooling. So, you know, maybe you don't have to send your, maybe location really isn't that much of an issue anymore but you know who knows what's going to happen so i figured i'll get or even just this is not just anybody that's thinking about you know wanting to change their scenery or what whatnot it's just for anybody who's just thinking about moving to philadelphia and moving into the suburban nearby suburbs outside of the city of philadelphia so where I'm starting at at number 10 is Jenkintown. Jenkintown is located in Montgomery County. It is not that far from the city. It's about a 30 minute drive, 30, 40 minute drive from Center City, Philadelphia. Um, you can actually get really close to Center City. You can actually get really close to Philadelphia when you are, you know, when you cross over Sheltonham Avenue into Philadelphia. Uh, but Jenkintown is located, what really is the main route of going into Jenkintown is Old York Road. And that is just one straight route. It's to the north of Philadelphia. And, you know, the homes are are really nice. And it's also pretty affordable um, with regarding to taxes and whatnot. It's a different story. But you know, you do have options of shopping. There is a downtown area and, you know, you can also, um, there, you're also really close to the nearby shopping areas, such as the Wawa, you have CVS, you have Whole Foods in Jenkintown. Um, and if you go up a little bit further in my next town, I will tell you more about that. Now for Jenkintown, the median list price is three hundred and forty four thousand five hundred now for the average sale price in Jenkintown it's three hundred seventy nine and three hundred seventy nine uh four hundred eighty six and the population is about uh four hundred forty four um four thousand four twenty two um four hundred twenty two sorry I'm batching that um now these numbers that I'm going to be taking, um, I basically based my data off of the average sales price within the last 12 months. So at the time of this video, it is um, not to date this video, but it is September of 2020. And so I looked back from the time that it is today, uh, 12 months from now, 12 months ago. So this is between, uh, September 2020, uh, 2019 to 2020. So that's where I'm getting my metrics from. And I'm just looking everything within residential real estate. Uh, I'm not including any commercial properties. Uh, I'm not, you know, or businesses and whatnot. Um, these are fee simple homes. This is just averages. So please keep that in mind. Um, and the population, a lot of these populations with the current sales, um, census going out, we don't really know what the numbers are right now. So these, these numbers are somewhat between 2016 and 2018. So just to, just so that you know, um, where I'm getting my metrics from. So back to, the, back to Jenkintown. Jenkintown, like I said, it's within 30, 40 minutes of Philadelphia. Um, you can get there through, um, through you have Old York Road and then you can take Old York Road all the way down through Broad Street to reach uh, um, the Rose, Route One, uh, which is seventy set, which is um, uh, yeah Route One, 
and that would take you to I-76. And, you know, and then also if you're looking to commute by train and you don't want to take any, um, you don't want to drive in, it is about a 35 minute SEPTA ride. Your line of route would be Warm Minister. Now, for Jenkintown, it, it, like I said, it's these counties, they, the taxes tend to be a little bit higher. However, the homes are a little bit more affordable. So what you get in, you may pay a little bit less in home prices, but you pay a little bit more in taxes. That's because a lot of these suburbs have municipalities um, and it's not as a big, it's not as big as Philadelphia, as the city of Philadelphia. Um, so on to number nine. Number nine is Abington Township. Abington Township is actually just north, it's just literally the next town up from Jenkintown if you're going along Old York Road. So you have Jenkintown, which has the downtown area. You have the Acme. You also have several shops there. There's a nice little downtown area as well. But if you go further up to Abington, where I mean, just geographically speaking, um, I kind of know when I'm in Abington when I see the Target, um, the Target, the Michaels, and <laughs> and there's just a lot of a lot of bigger shops there. Um, that's you know that's that's Abington, and Abington, it's all it's just north. It's not that far. It's you know at, it's about like a five seven minute drive if even. I would say five minutes. So if you're looking to commute, I would add at least, if you're driving into Philadelphia, just add an additional five minutes because you have to go through Jenkintown in order to get to Philadelphia. Um, everything same applies to Jenkintown that I had stated before. The median list price in Abington is 280500 and the average sales price is $299,212. And like I said, these are all averages and medians. So, and the population is about 55,557 uh, based off of 2006 um, records. So, <laughs> Abington Township, what I know about Abington Township is that I like to shop out there. I personally shop in Jenkintown and Abington um, because I just like the areas. It's closer to where I live geographically and it's not that far. And it's, you know, and it's just, it's just a nice area to shop. And I like um, that there's a Wawa. <laughs> I'm so used to going to the Jenkintown and the Jenkintown Wawa uh, because it's like right down Old York Road and it's not like I have to go through all these crazy little routes and whatnot just to get to the closest Wawa. But there is a Wawa closer to me, but you know, I'm, I'm close to Broad Street. I could just hit Broad Street down and I'm like there in like 15 minutes. So, but I like Abington. It's just the environment and as well as you know the township it's it's you know and the homes are relatively they're relatively affordable and it's also a very desirable er their neighborhood as well um because of um you have access not only to the parks i have you seen my um you have access to the parks and to schools and other recreational activities out there okay so number eight is sheltonham is sheltonham township Sheltonham Township. Sheltonham Township is just south of Jenkintown. It is right where Sheltonham sits is literally along the border of West Oak Lane and Mount Airy. Uh, so, and at East Oak Lane. It's on the Northwest side. So if you're coming up, so really the dividing line between Sheltonham in Philadelphia is Sheltonham Avenue. So on the left side of the street, you're on Philadelphia. On the right side of the street, you're in Sheltonham. You're in Montgomery County. So Sheltonham is, it also has a lot of shops as well. It's, you know, you have the Target, you have, Wa you have Walmart as well. There is um, Models. There's the Fresh Grocer. We also have ShopRite. There is it's just, it's really also a, a commercial area as well 
but you know you can go shopping there there's also an h mart uh for you know for um ethnic foods um well it, east um for asian foods if you're into if you are into that it's like the h mart it's like the the store um it's the grocery store the asian grocery store and and uh and yeah <laughs> um but you know not only about Cheltenham you can get pretty much into other areas there's 309 that takes you out further out away from Philadelphia you can go to Fort Washington you can kind of you can get to the turnpike from there and um you can go into Bucks County further up into Montgomery County as well uh and if you want to get into Philadelphia again subtract about you're about 20 minutes you're not that far <laughs> you're about like just subtract about like 10 minutes or so because you're you're kind of right there in philadelphia once you cross over Sheltonham avenue uh but you can also but you know it's the same that applies to get into the city is basically take Sheltonham, take um take broad street go down old york road take broad street and then you'll get to route one which will take you to i-76 or you can ride broad shoot all the way down to center city that works as well it takes you right downtown and um but yes you can opt for septa it there is you could have your choice of either taking the warm minister line the warm minister line or you can take the glenside um, line that also takes you into center city both regional rail you have your choice because septa the regional rail it stops at both places okay moving on to number seven now we're going to take now number seven is going to take us to i guess you can say it's more on i guess more on the west side further west i think or east i would say west um you're more going west uh this is king of prussia uh king of prussia is in montgomery county it is if you know any if anybody knows about king of prussia we have a major there's a major mall there it's king of prussia mall it's actually it's one big mall but it has two buildings so you have the plaza and the court um and it was and there is a strip that you know that connects the there's a walkway that connects the two malls uh so if you're looking for some and you can there is a lot that goes on in King of Prussia. And um, from what I always know about King of Prussia, it was always fun going there as a kid because you had, um, what I liked about King of Prussia was that it was always, um, it was always a day that we would go and just kind of have fun shopping and just going into the different stores going that you don't normally get in your normal malls. Um, well, back then when I was a kid it was like I would always want to go see the Sangrio, the Sanrio store because I was into Hello Kitty at the time I don't know if it's still there it's probably still there but you know yeah but you get what I mean you get to you know you have Crate and Barrel there uh you have uh well Lord and Taylor used to be and I say used to be because they're closing it down in Center City and um on City Line Avenue, but there was Bloomingdale's, <laughs> and yeah, it, it, it was just a different, it was a different type of mall because it was bigger and you had more, and there was more stores there. It was everybody traveled to it, um, and they had the Cheesecake Factory where the Cheesecake Factory was that was their location, um, was in King of Prussia. But nevertheless, um, you have the different restaurants, you got different, you got a lot of different restaurants there and you have different shops and stores, anything. Basically, if you're looking for, you know, luxury stuff to purchase at, that's kind of where people would go to purchase because that, that was the mall that, that was the, that was the it mall. Um, now going talking more about king of prussia uh the area is extremely easy to get to but it's also more congested because a, it's definitely a tourist area a lot of people like to go there um but and not only for shopping however it also to go through king of prussia it's you know that's basically how a lot of people in the area in the nearby suburbs area would get to the turnpike is to go through king of prussia and King of Prussia, it's, you know, the turnpike is right there. You have the exit right there. You can get anywhere across the state um, 
from when you take the turn break. And, um, and there's also a lot, and a lot of corporate um, businesses do center, used to uh, centered in King of Prussia. Uh, and it was just easier to get to because you have, you know, maybe if they didn't want to work, if they didn't want to be downtown, they would choose their location for King of Prussia, maybe because of the rent and also because of like, you know, you have other people but I know a lot of businesses some or, or there's a good bit of businesses that do have a lot of bit ha, do operate their businesses corporately um, you have the office buildings there um, out of King of Prussia and the average sales price in King of Prussia is $383 and no $383,666 uh, I don't even know if I'm saying these numbers right <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the median list price is 369,445. And the population is 7,544. 7, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering, but I'll make sure I have, I will put all the numbers and the data below. I will type it out. I'm sorry that I'm fumbling through this um just just bear with me <laughs> so yes um so that's king of Prussia, and okay so on to number six number six takes us up to bucks county which is north of philadelphia and it is sellersville okay so i don't know too much about bucks county I just know it's it's a bit of a drive for me so um but nevertheless like I only know like you know I I live in I live in Philadelphia and I go in and out of Montgomery County Delaware County Philadelphia County I'm all around that when you go get me up in Bucks County it's like huh what what's in Bucks County but there is a lot in Bucks County and a lot of people like Bucks County where and as well as I did actually spend a day a few days um I spent a day up in Bucks County because um, I just was just hanging out with with a front with a coworker of mine, and she lives in Bucks County, and I just love the area. So and and I think and the thing is is that it's not as congested, it's not as congested as Philadelphia, and you have a little bit more, you have more land. So just keep in mind that Montgomery County, as you're closer to the city. If your town is, if the town is more closer to the city, you don't really get, it's, it becomes less and less dense as you're moving further out. But if you're closer to the city, it's more denser. Um, so, um, but yes, in, in Sellersville, this is in Bucks County, it's about, you're going to add more time to your commute. Um, it's about 53 minutes through, you know, you can basically take, you can basically get on the route on, I'm guessing 202 or get on 95, um, to drive in. It's a, it will take a bit of a time, a little bit of some time to get there, but yeah, it's, but you're further out. You're in, you're in Bucks County. Now I would even go to beg the differ that I think it's probably three or two. 309 I would say 309 is really the best bet to go and you know for the train you would take the Lansdale and Doylestown train to get into town to get into Center City and that would take about like probably one hour one hour because you're further out um, there's more stops along the way so yeah um, now for Sellersville um the median list price is 289,900 and average sales price is 288,667 and the population is 4261 so it's relatively small it's a relatively small town, but if you like that, if you like that small community, and, and you know, so you're not too far from like other areas such as Lansdale and Doylestown, where they have a where they have booming main streets. Uh, so I would love so you know again I'm going to take a deep dive look at Sellersville. I'm very interested to find out what this town is like. Okay, so number five is Chalfont. That's also in Bucks County. 
So I'm guessing that's not too far from Sellersville, but I'm not sure about that geographically. So, but this is considered what affordability. So remember, I'm going up, I'm talking about affordability here. So I don't really have too much to say about that. Just kind of add that on the seller, Sellersville and then we'll just keep it moving. All right, so median list price is $395,000. Average sales price is $439,744. So yeah, they're listing their prices at three, at like just about high threes. But you know, I guess because of the demand, it's causing the sales prices to go up. So, you know, it could be very, so it may be, you know, for somebody that's thinking about moving in an area, it may be something that they may consider is the fact that you get you may possibly get a strong revalue, you know, a, a strong resale value. And the population is also small, it's actually smaller than Sellersville, at 4,047 4, people. So, okay, now going, so for number four, we are heading into Delaware County, which is south of Philadelphia. And we're going to media. AKA, it's also Upper Providence Township, um, which I never really considered it as Upper Providence Township. I always knew it as media. That's all that we always called it was, was, was that it was just media. So I don't, well, yeah, but that's where I got the source from. But they, they listed it as this. So anyway, um, the meat, so media is located in, is it located in, is, is basically south of, um, South of Philadelphia. And um, to get there, you would take Route 1 and it will take you all the way out to Media. You can actually, and then get off the bypass and then get on, I think, 252, if that's the route. I believe that is the route is 252, if I'm getting that correct. And I'm probably not right about that. I think 252 is further up. But anyway, there's a route that takes you, um, um, that takes you there. I think that's, um, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll show it on the map. Um, and that's media. Media is a nice, is, you know, is relatively a really nice community. Um, there's also a main street. It also goes along Baltimore Pike, um, which also stems from Philadelphia on West Phil in, um, from out of West Philly. Yes, because it was Baltimore. It's Baltimore Avenue in West Philadelphia, but it. But once you hit the suburbs, once you get past, um, I think uh, Lansdowne. When you get into Lansdowne, or at least definitely past. Um, I don't know when it switches because I always called it Baltimore Pike. I never really called it Baltimore Avenue, but you know. But being in the city, it's very different. But in but wait, but consider it that when you're in the city limits of Philadelphia, it's called Baltimore Avenue. But it's the same route that takes you all the way from Baltimore from Philadelphia, practically to Maryland because it just runs. That's the thing. It just runs. So you're passing so many different towns just by going down Baltimore Pike. But anyway, Baltimore Pike is what kind of, is where media kind of, is one of the towns that it runs through. And it has an awesome Main Street area. And I mean, they have the Trader Joe's, you have various shops and local businesses and local restaurants. They, it's, it's a very, very predominant, it's a very, it's a very booming area. So if you're into that small town feel, well, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't really say it's a small town feel, but if you're into like towns with main streets, um, historical main streets and whatnot, there's, there's media and it's, you know, and the school district is, you know, you, you know, if you're into need to find out information about school districts regarding any of these areas. I'll put a link down below. Um, but anyway, the, but anyway, um, media is like, from what I always know about media, I started my real estate career in media and I actually go to the dentist in media. Um, I know I'm kind of all over the world, but that's just where I grew up. Like I grew up in Delaware, in Delaware County and 
that's where we went was there was a um there's a really nice dental practice there um and i just always enjoyed um the area and you know you have um i think delaware canal no, i think that's in but never mind all right <laughs> scratch that okay so median list price is four hundred thirty nine thousand four hundred fifty me average sales price is four hundred sixty three thousand eight hundred seventy four and the population is ten um is a uh, is ten thousand four four oh three and also just to even touch base on media even more when you go along the back roots of media it's very hilly <laughs> so a lot of the houses do tend to be on hills but you're also in a scenery um you do have more greenery and and more um and more uh space so it's definitely it's if it, it, so you're really within nature you have a lot of you know you have you know it's it's a nice tranquil area that if you were to purchase a home in the area and you enjoy the area you can enjoy you know the scenery of nature in media okay so going moving on to number three is springfield and springfield delaware county so i have to put springfield on the map uh the reason and this is just something that i personally picked um because i've i've um i actually went to springfield high school so that's why i put down springfield delaware county because there's actually two springfields there is springfield delaware county which we just all know it well i shouldn't say we all know it but it's called spring it's springfield pennsylvania however there's also springfield township which is in <laughs> which is in montgomery county now spring and the crazy thing is is that springfield delaware county they, they call themselves springfield township that's the same thing but the only thing is the only difference is is that they're in two separate counties um so there's spring so in this in this um in this video i'm going to talk about springfield delaware county and i can personally attest to springfield delaware county because i am i graduated from springfield high school a blue and gold but anyway getting off of that that whole thing but springfield delaware county um it is it is um it runs along baltimore pike as well and the houses there you have really nice colonial houses um and they have really in you know if you're you know you have your neighbor next to you it's it's that old it's that small it's also a small town feel that you know not necessarily small because springfield can be relatively big but um but you know regardless um you know the houses there are you know they they hold well and um and I oh and but yeah the 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 it's a colonial a lot of them are are detached or twins if even if they're even twins I don't even think there's really twins in Springfield but if they are they're probably newer construction homes but most of them they're single detached um it's just about it you know you're right before media um probably yeah probably about like give or take like a little bit like probably like 10 minutes because there's a highway that's that separates um um there is a lot of commercial shops in springfield there's not really a main street ultim ultimately because there's baltimore pike however you know that we have uh, springfield has a lot of shopping centers and grocery stores uh you can get you know we have the spring there's the springfield mall there um and then you can and I feel like there's like two sides of Springfield because you have Springfield on Baltimore Pike and then you also have Springfield on Route 1 uh, that also has that's also has other shops and whatnot. Um, it, there, there's the movie theater that's there, the AMC, you have Walmart, um, Bath and Body Works and I, yeah I just remember always going we always went there to shop. 
<laughs> so, because they had, like, the grocery stores, they're used to, well, growing up was Gennardi's, but now it's Giant. Um, and I don't know if there's any other grocery stores. I think Giant is really the only one that's there. Um, can't really count Acme because that's in another town. But, you know, but it's, but like, a lot of stuff, if you're on Baltimore Pike, it's all there. It's you have Stony Creek Shopping Center that has the natural food store, Martindale's, and then uh, there's a Dunkin' Donuts. You have Office Max, and on the other side, on and and that's Stony Creek is on Baltimore Pike, and um, on Route One, off of Route One, there's the Staples. There's uh, there's also another giant. Oh yeah, there's two giants. And also, not, uh, speaking of two things, not only do we have, not only the Springfield has two giants, there's also two targets. <laughs> so there, but the target is in Morton, cause it's on the other side of the street <laughs> of Baltimore Pike. But regardless, there is a there is a target in Springfield Mall. Um, so. I can attest, but, but nevertheless, living in Springfield, you know, you, you can, you have so much to, you, there's so much, but anyway, I can go over and talk about Springfield all day long, but anyway, on to the numbers, uh, the average sales price in Springfield is 339,174, median list price is 334,900, and the population is 24,000. 199 and that's of 2018 springfield has definitely went up in population but it's always but because it's springfield delaware county is a bigger area is is a bigger town there's definitely more people there and okay so travel time to philadelphia is about 30 minutes if you take baltimore pike as well but you also have three options to take there's baltimore pike you also have 476 that takes you to either 76 or you could take 95 or and then as well as um route one which will take you right into the city as well so and for the septa ride if you want to for this train the the train station is um the the SEPTA regional rail line you would take is Media Elwin. This is, and I don't know if I said that about Media, but Media Elwin is what you would take um, from Springfield and Media in order to get to Center City if you don't want to travel by car. Okay, now to number two on our list, it is Ridley Park. Ridley Park is also in Delaware County. It is actually where it is, is on the east side of Springfield um and it's also south of media it's not it's probably about two or three towns over from springfield so um ridley park um what rides along ridley park is 476 as well as um mcday boulevard and chester pike mcday boulevard is where is you also have it's also just as as um instrumental it, like it also takes um it also is, uh, you know, you have a lot of shops and stores and commercial pro um, businesses set up along McDade Boulevard. It is just as busy, but probably not as busy as Baltimore Pike, but um, McDade Boulevard, you have, um, there is the bakery, um, Kay's Bakery. I love Kay's. That's where I always used to get my birthday cake. My grandparents used to buy me a cake from Kay's. I love, I love Kay's birthday cake. It's right there in Ridley Park. Um, and um, the house is there as well. It is very affordable. There's also, you know, you also got to deal with taxes as well. But you have access to parks and recreational activities out in that area as well. And the, and for travel time you probably be out about have about like 30 minutes on a good day mind you i'm saying all these times on a good day this is not really counting for rush hour if we're counting rush hour just immediately add like an extra 20 to 30 minutes onto your time because especially if you're coming from king of prussia it's no joke it's no joke but anyway 
um yeah you're about 30 to 40 minutes from the city from ridley park you have mcday boulevard that well mcday boulevard can take you into the city but it's a little but it's more of a scenic route um but if you're looking for a straight route you can take 476 or actually you're right by 95 by ridley park because you know the the exit is right there you can get right on 95 and you can be there within 30 minutes it's not it doesn't take that long to get there so it's really easy access and for Ridley Park um for the septa line um I believe no you can't really take media Elwin and um but I can find out what septa line you can be able to get into um, now the median list price is one hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, so right under two hundred thousand. I find that a little bit questionable, but regardless, the average sales price is two hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred sixty eight, and the population is seven thousand forty three. It's a smaller area. It's a smaller. It's a smaller town, but nevertheless, it's just as booming and bustling. Um, and for our number one spot, number one is Brookhaven, Brookhaven, Pennsylvania. That is located in Delaware County. You're, it's um, it's right next to Media, um, I guess west on the west side or east side um, of Media. Um, it's part of Never Providence. Actually, no, no, it's not Never Providence, but it's on the other side. Um, and Never Providence it tends to be a little bit more expensive. Um, media, but Brookhaven is the next town over from Media. So, um, Brookhaven is also a commercial area as well. You have a lot of commercial stores. You have Aldi's. You have um, you have the the Giant. You have you have more options. You have um, Shoprite. You have Chick Fil A. You have Lowe's. I, and I actually lived in Brookhaven for a few years. Um, that was my my husband and I stopping stomping grounds when we first got married. That's where we lived at, and we grew to love Brookhaven. Unfortunately, we don't live there anymore. Um, we live in Philly now, um, but we hope one day that maybe we may decide to move back. Um, but we because we always loved Brookhaven. We always loved the area. We loved how convenient we were able to get to everything like everything that i was looking for in a town was there um but you know regardless uh brookhaven has some really nice homes now brookhaven as a caveat has two separate areas um one it's split in between into two there is um and that goes by the but it all shares the same zip code um, but when you're going to school, just know that, you know, if you want to be in a particular school district, you have to make sure you're on a certain side of Brookhaven as opposed to another side. So, um, not to, you know, but I'm just saying this just as informational purposes only. Um, now there is now Brookhaven is split into two. There is, um, there is Brookhaven that is on the Penn Delco side and then there's also Brookhaven that's on the Chester Township side and they are and Chester Township is a town in and of itself it's also it's a um it's a different town it's it's a part of Chester Upland so it's a but it's for like school district wise and whatnot so um but yeah just always remember that if you're looking to purchase in Brookhaven uh there what there is like a certain side that there are two different sides to Brookhaven. But nevertheless, uh, Brookhaven has some amazing homes. There's neighborhoods such as Toby Farms, uh, which is also a really nice section. Um, it's also, it's on the Chester Township side uh, and it's all very affordable. And then there's also Penn Delco that also has affordability um, that is for, that anybody can move into that area now the median list price now this is now because now remember it is the the numbers may have brought it down because we're comparing because Brookhaven has two parts but they all share the same zip code um the median list price is 151,000 and the average sales price is 161,907 
I think that maybe if you were on a different side of Brookhaven, it would the numbers would definitely go up. Um, but I think that because of the two different sides of Brookhaven, it brings the affordability down. That's why I say that this is more affordable. That if you're looking for an area that you know it, you're just looking to start out, you're not really sure where you want to move to. You just you know you just want to get a house somewhere. And like Brookhaven's a really nice neighborhood. I loved it. I loved living there. Um, you had two different groceries. You have two. Not only did you have like, well, at the time when I lived there, there was only two grocery stores. It was the ShopRite and it was, well, it was Pathmark, um, but they changed the ShopRite and then Giant and they definitely, and I recently traveled into the area and the area has actually really boomed like commercially over the past few years. Uh, and, and they had done some, um, say the, uh, and I would say like they modernized a lot of things. Um, I would say that Brookhaven is a really nice area to move to and you're not that far from the city. You have 95, you have your options of either taking 95, you can also take Route 1, not, no, not Route 1, but you can take, um, um, Baltimore, A Baltimore Avenue into, um, in, in, and go towards like Baltimore Pike. Um, you can get there, get there through there, through Baltimore, from, um, Brookhaven Road or Brookhaven Avenue, I can't remember. But anyway, what rides through Brookhaven is the um, is Edgemont Avenue. That just that's just the main that's the main street, and we are um, and it's just a very and like I said, it's a nice neighborhood. It's like there's parades there. You have that small town. You do have that feel of of a town and and whatnot. Um, there's you know, you have two, you have major, um, pharmacies, you have CVS and Walgreens and the CVS there is 24 hours. So if you have somebody that need, if you have a child or, or somebody that needs medicine in the middle of the night, you have a pharmacy there that's also that's 24 hours. And I forgot to mention that about Jenkintown. Jenkintown also does have a 24 hour, um, CVS as well. I forgot to mention that as well. Um, that was number 10 on my list. I'm sorry. I'm just picking these things up but it's just they're just kind of coming to me as I'm talking and think and just saying this stuff so but regardless um the did I ever say the population oh the population for Brookhaven is 8,026 uh and you can get to city into the city really really quickly so you have 476 you have you have 95 you have route one you also have you have so many different ways and I would add about like you're probably about like four over 40 minutes because you're a lot further out from from the city so you're you're closer to Delaware actually you could actually get to Delaware within like like I think 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes because you're not that far um and you know there's Widener University that's really close to Brookhaven um, that is it for my video uh, that is the top 10 towns top 10 affordable area suburban neighborhoods in Philadelphia so if there's anything that I that I have missed on the list that you want me to include please let me know and I would definitely be more than happy to do a video on that I want to know what is your favorite neighborhood that I had said and if you disagree or if you not if you if you agree or disagree tell me about it in the comments below uh nevertheless if there's anything that I can do for you please do not hesitate to call me I you know you I have my information down below um I love it when people call me and let me and you know and I like to enjoy and I enjoy helping people look for their next homes here in Philadelphia so until then have a great day.